I'm, I'm, I'm planning from the garden. I'm all psyched up, ready to go. How's everybody? I, I, I got a chance to see a show last night. Um, I think uh, Broke Farmer. I think it's, uh, he had, and he had he had a quite a show. He had a good show. Um, lots of people chiming in, um, uh, but it was a for me to even get in to say anything like hello or happy New Year's or anything of that nature. Um, watching one of the Bulls uh, videos, returning, uh, oh, excuse me, picking up a, I said, hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, Creek Walker, all right. Um, good you chimed in. Good to see you chimed in. Um, I, and, and what I'm doing tonight, I looked at some prices. Oh, my goodness, I looked at some prices on, because uh, I'm, I'm starting to receive some of my books uh, or catalogs. I can't believe how the prices went up. But they up. They up. Little tiny pack of seeds, $3.50. Plus, that doesn't cover shipping. You got to ship it to you. Um, and so, when the weather breaks, and you get Walmart stocking up on seeds and, and Home Depot and Lowe's. Usually it's where I live. It's home first. They get it first. So I go there and look. I usually don't buy at, at uh, uh, Home Depot because their seeds are all pretty, pretty uh, pricey. So I'll, I'll look and see what they have. And depending on what they have, it depends on what I buy. Like I went there last year, and I just went to look. Uh, um, if you want to go into these stores, I went in and, and I wound up buying a, a kiwi, excuse a kiwi plant. And also a um, plant that's called a uh, uh, pomegranate, oh, wonderful. And that thing is growing real good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I did buy the kiwi. Yeah, that's right. I bought the kiwi and I bought the pomegranate. And um, uh, didn't plan on doing that. Had no idea I was going to do that. But I looked at them and I said, this particular pomegranate can produce fruit without um, without having two plants. You just need one plant. And that got my attention. The other thing was the pomegranate, which is same thing as self-fertile. That got my attention. Um, excuse me. Excuse me. Um, and so that was that was um, definitely uh, 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 you know something to grab my attention because I like to get plants that if you get one you can still produce fruit. Now I have a beautiful uh, cherry tree that produced very few cherries last year uh, because the tree is still very young, and this year that particular cherry tree, and I got to tell you it produced a. Uh, I, I don't know the name of it right now. I have to. I would have to go look it up, but it's a cherry tree that's sweet, and it's sold at. Um, uh, I hate calling names out, but it's sold at um, Stock Brothers. It's a sweet cherry, and it's the only one they have that produces cherries on its own. And the cherries I like because they're firm. They're not like regular sweet cherries. They're firm, sweet, uh, real sweet. Tastes just like the ones um, you would get at the market. So I have, um, how many cherry trees do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Five, yeah. And out of the, the, the five, I have 
two that produces. Uh, the other three, uh, for some reason, have not produced. Uh, you know, they don't produce. So I'm going to see what they do this year. Uh, because I bought them from a store that kept sending them and mixing them up. So you don't know which cherry tree you have. I, so I don't know which one it is because it, it, it mix it up. So I have two uh, different types of uh, um, kiwi and I have uh, how many different, two different types of plums. It would have been three, but one passed uh, during the winter uh, when I got it. For, uh, this, this company sent me these um, plum trees totally free. It was just, it was just, it was accidental shipment. And so I called them up to see, you know, if they wanted me to send them back to them. And they said, no, keep them and enjoy them. So that was, that was an interesting situation. So I put them in the ground. And one only had one root on it. And I knew it was going to die. I said, this is going to die. That tree right now is probably about eight, nine feet tall. But the only garden supplies that I want to get so far is tune-ups for my tractor, a tune-up for my lawnmower. Because the fertilizer that I'm going to be using this year, I will never, ever, ever be sure of fertilizer. As long as my yard produces grass, and weeds. I can compost them. I can make teas from them. I will always have uh, fertilizer. I do not have to run off to the big box stores to get fertilizer. If I do that, it's because I kind of want to do that, but I don't have to. Uh, you can make fertilizer. It's just way too easy to make. And when I watch videos, I watch a lot of gardening videos. I've probably seen some of your your videos. But I, I don't like videos that anytime they try to make something complex, I don't like that. Because nothing is that complex. Nature is so direct to the point that it'll actually make you think sometimes it is complex and it's not. Um, leaves fall from the trees, they hit the ground, they decompose and go into the ground. They're eaten by forms of life that live in the soil. And when they eat it, they live, produce, die. But before they do all that, they excrete their waste and, and plants eat that. When plants eat that, Plants do well. Some fertilizers will burn your plants. Some will. And this year is going to be challenging for gardeners as well as farmers to get fertilizer. It's already on, on the books. It's already all over the news. It's already on the internet. If you look it up, it's there about the difficulty it's going to be getting fertilizers this year. I don't have to worry about that. It's too easy to make. And last year, I got me a whole truck full of um, uh, wood chips, and that will also be used as fertilizer. So I'm planning everything out now because Food is going up in cost. I mean, it's really getting expensive. Absolutely. As long as you got plenty of weeds, you got fertilizer. As long as you have plenty of weeds, you got fertilizer. And people don't want you to be doing that. 
that run these big fertilizer companies and some of these guards, I mean, some of these, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, uh, gardeners online who sell fertilizer, they don't want you to know that because they, they'll tell you this here and that there will, will grow this and grow that, but they won't tell you that before there were box stores and before there was an internet with, with uh, gardeners on there selling fertilizers, there was Mother Nature. She's been doing it for millions of years fertilizing plants. Man is about the only slowest creature. It takes them to catch on to things because they always want to force their will on nature. And that's not how it works. All you have to do is sit back or stand and watch and nature will show you how it's done the correct way. So when I go out and go fishing and I look in the woods and I look at all the leaves lying there and I come back in a few weeks and all the leaves are gone and no one went through there and cleaned them up, where did they go? Back in the ground to feed the soil and the soil to feed the big plants and the bushes and the trees. Now why is it that Nature can do that, and we can't mimic nature and do the same thing. Mimic to uh, to actually copy it. It works. Growing trees and plants together, but when you watch some of these uh, man-made uh, videos, and they show you the most complex way to do things, and I already told you how I feel about uh, digging and digging and digging in the soil i see lots of uh, videos like that where gods i mean where um gardeners are just digging in the soil digging in the soil and i look at that and i go what, what where did this come from it came from uh men before them who showed them how to do it and they did it this way now keep in mind it works in some cases but it also tears up your soil because it used to be a time where uh, farmers would take soil and use it for many years to plant, grow, and to uh, uh, produce food for his family. And in the process, he would ruin the soil and then move somewhere else and use that soil. Interesting. Now some of the farmers are saying, wait a minute. What if I didn't till my soil? What Could I keep up with the demand? Could I make money? And now some farmers are finding out they can make money because they're saving on fuel. They're producing uh, almost the same number of crops without using a whole bunch of chemicals. They are getting by. Plants, if it was a network set up where the gardeners can supply each other with plants, that'd be a better deal than trying to buy uh, plants from these uh, these nurseries. These nurseries are expensive now. I never thought that I would see a, a fruit tree that was three feet and four feet tall costing almost $60. But they, they go, they're that price. If you go to the box stores, that's what they are. It's 20, it's 20, uh, It, well, let's just say it's cold tonight. It's around 25 degrees tonight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, buying from a local garden is a better way to go. It's just a better deal. Um, I know that 
pretty soon I will be one of them guys that will be selling uh, certain plants. I already got that in my mind because I could do it. I could do it definitely cheaper than any um, any uh, garden store. Because if you don't, if you don't, if you keep buying from the store, I would definitely buy. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. It would be the best way to get it done. As you go into Walmart, they got little tiny little plants that they're selling for ten dollars, like a little tiny plant. Uh, they sell for like ten dollars. And you you're thinking it's a piece of cutting from a grapevine. So they gotta pay the person who cut them up into pieces and then stuck them in the soil and got them rooted out and then put them in the packaging. But ten dollars, that's kind of steep. I'm sorry, excuse me. Oh, I almost saw it, but you know, it's a my I don't know why my own my own shows and then it blinks away like that. But um I got plenty, plenty of um, ways to uh, take care of my plants, reproduce them. Um, it, it's just a better deal. It, it it's just a better deal. So I, I now am in this mode here. Um, if you got great, if you got great vines, like I got one called a flame grape. I wonder if any of you ever grow on a flame grape. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful grape. A flame grape. And then the other grape I have is a Thompson. I've had that, that grape vine for well over seven, eight years. Concord. Okay. Um, I found a, a container. I'm going to just tell a little story real quick. I found a container with a Concord in, Concord in it one time, years ago. It was marked up. It was $15 back during that time. Beautiful plant, big uh, a gallon pot. And they wanted $6 for it because it was just left on the rack. Nobody bought it. And I offered that, that uh, grape. But I said, wait a minute. I don't like uh, Concord. But Concord is a good grape for those who like them. And... Uh, Hi there, Morning Garden. Hello, how you doing? Food Forest Permaculture. Good to hear from you, my brother. But Concord is a good grape. And I'm wondering why they only sell Concord in some of the stores you've been to. Because here in Maryland, um, we sometimes get Concords, but not every year. We get Concords in the box stores. Uh, let's see. All the seeds on eBay went up. Um, it's just a seed. Let's see. Let's see what seeds cost. Just go out on the internet and say vegetable seeds. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, let's see.
Wow. They three dollars on average for a pack of seeds. And that's not the shipping included. That's not shipping. Um the only seed I want to learn how to save uh, do it the right way is eggplant, uh, 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 black beauties. Um, and I'm thinking you just want to grow them out until, it, 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 you know, it basically gets overripe and then uh, somehow remove the seeds and, and um, wash them and put them in a uh, plate and dry them and then, and then uh, stratify the seed. That's my thinking. Now, I think you're talking about uh, Food Farmers Permaculture. I think you're talking about saving seeds from grocery stores. Because, you know, because I've, I've, um, I've looked at that as well. Uh, that, that's, an, that's an idea where you could buy uh, a few peppers at the grocery store that are ripe and remove the seeds from them. Uh, and grow those seeds. Um, that way you get to eat the pepper and you get the seeds, which is basically a byproduct of the pepper. And you could, you could, you could grow the seeds. Hybrid squash seeds. Um, a pack of seeds. Let's see what they cost. The place is called Park Seeds. So this is this is a oh, let's see. And the price right there. I hope you can see that, but people know they 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 run these stores. They know that we're in the middle of a pandemic, and they're getting they're getting uh, rich off of it. They know that you need food. Blackberry plants. Let's see what they cost. Uh, uh, let's see. Never buy seeds. Never buy seeds is not guaranteed. Um, this is definitely a plant you want in, in your garden. That's a blackberry. I've been growing these for years. I bought the plant for a dollar seventy-five. I got gypped uh, back in the day because it was a throwaway plant. And the guy looked at me like this and said, "Yes, yeah, save your seeds. Yes, yep, save your seeds." And here is a. Uh, it says a blackberry. It says blackberry grow wild everywhere. On uh, island. Oh, okay. They grow everywhere. But now, do they grow the? They're not the. Um, they're not like the domesticated kind. You know, they grow real big, uh, fruit. It's beautiful. Oh, hello, hello. It's on Hagen Island. Yep. Some people are coming in the room. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad my, no, I ain't glad my site. My site's not that popular right now. Uh, but, but it doesn't matter. 
Sí. Air kind of, uh, uh, Colombia growing wild. Oh, okay, they grow wild. Yeah. Yeah. Food farmers permaculture. I got to tell you, um, uh, you already know that I have a pomegranate plant. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm going to do some air layering eventually. But I want to keep the pomegranate plants uh, small um, without... Let's see. Hi, Stephanie. Okay, hi, he's, he's speaking to us. Um, I want to keep the the plant small. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Keep... Uh, And, and, oh, and I was watching one video. I want, I want to tell all of you about this because it, it shocked me in a way. And what he described, he was a professional uh, farmer, and he said, um, he said, he said, peaches are one of the worst fruit trees you want to grow. And he explained all of these reasons. He said the insects eat them, birds eat them, uh, squirrels eat them. He said they have raffle, uh, excuse me, they, they have a number of diseases that they get, um, that peaches get, number of diseases. They said, uh, he, he named them all, but, but it, was, it was just so many diseases he named. And he talked about the stink bugs that poking holes in them and then the different types of uh, uh, disease get in through that little tiny hole that'll rot the whole peach. Um, he said you almost have to spray uh, peach trees on a weekly basis in order to have any kind of decent kind of uh, looking fruit to come off of it. I said, wow, this guy uh, seemed like he knows what he's talking about, but peach is like uh, 600 hours of yeah, yeah, my, my, my peaches, I have, uh, how many trees I have? Uh, I think I have four, five trees. I have five peach trees. And I am going to really get back to uh, pruning these trees the correct way because I, I usually just let them grow. And um, I get all of these peaches all over the trees now. And when I get all of these trees, I mean, all these peaches all over the trees, it's just ridiculous because they're small, about like that, like golf balls, uh, a little bigger maybe. And before they turn to anything, peaches like up there against a house overhang. Okay. Okay. Um, but... Peaches definitely, I used to get pretty peaches years ago. Now, the tree loads up with all these peaches. I try to thin them, but there's so many um, that you can pull them, and then when you look at them, and before you know it, you got all these insect bites all over them. Um, they're everywhere on them, and you think, okay, how is it that, and I don't want to spray the trees, I don't want to spray them because I don't like putting chemicals on stuff that I eat. But the insects definitely uh, ravish them. Now, I thought about doing a dormancy spray all over the tree, but um, but uh, the, the the trees. Uh, you know, so it's so many trees I have. It's close to 25 trees, and they, they're growing and they're tall. And I'm gonna bring them all back down to about five, five and a half, six feet, and uh, and and just definitely keep them there, and so I can better take care of them. Yep. So I'm I'm feeling kind of a certain way about it, because. Um, you know, I grow grapes and before I get near any grapes, uh, I think it's the squirrels or it's the birds. I come back from work. Every single grape is gone as soon as they get near being ready. So this year's, um, it's going to be, um, 
my insect cover put over them, or I'll put bird, net out, bird netting over them because it's just worth doing that because I'm not getting the fruit. Once they get near done, the, the fruit is being eaten up by um, insects. Insects and also birds. Birds eat grapes. And they seem to know where my grapes are exactly. Because as soon as they, I mean, I got these pretty clusters. You can look at some of my videos. And soon as they got about two, maybe three days before they're absolutely ready, uh, the birds have, have wiped them out. But I'm, but I'm thinking, spend a little money, protect what you're growing because there's no point in growing it if they're going to eat it up and you're not going to get any of it. Just having fun uh, gardening, and also, uh, you know, it's 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 costly when you garden if you don't know what you're doing with cost. Uh, the best fertilizer on earth, on earth, is compost. No matter how much other business. Entities try to fool you. They try to fool you. And tell you buy this and buy that. It's compost. I'm just looking at these um, pieces of fruit. You could do the same thing. You just got to know what you're doing. But these seeds for these fruit, cantaloupe, got one here three dollars. Another one uh, two uh, forty nine. Uh, here's some seeds for seven dollars. seeds I've been shopping I've been shopping for uh, about six weeks now and I'm almost done Name a plant that is the number one plant that grows in a garden throughout, and that's corn. I'm looking at this, um, my favorite corn, peaches and cream. It's a hybrid. And this particular store here, this particular store here wants 
for a pack of seeds. They want two seventy nine plus the shipping. Wow, look at this right here. 25 pound bag of peaches and cream corn is $404. Okay, Google. I just want to... Um, last frost date here is information from urban farmer okay let's see last frost date is 430 I will start my seeds indoors long before that date something went wrong please try again And the, the uh, rain barrel system is definitely going to be uh, used this year because water costs and taxes and everything just went up here in Maryland. We have some of the highest taxes in the country. And I'm starting to see now more people are growing food here in Maryland, also Baltimore City, more people. You're lucky if you have a garden. And if you don't have a backyard, and you can get a hold of some containers, you can still have a garden. It's that simple. Wait a minute, are you talking about, okay, you are talking about lead from your home. Uh, it's gonna affect uh, the food that you put in the ground. If you're spraying it with lead, it goes into the plant. Plant goes into you. You're eating lead. And uh, and so what you want to do, my uh, neighbor, he hooked up his own uh, filtration system on the line coming in the house so all the water that comes to his house gets filtered all of it and he showed me one day he just wanted to show me the differences he showed me a filter that was in his house for about well, let's say five or six months and then he showed me the new filter and I said to him you mean to tell me that we're drinking this? And he said, yeah. It was nasty as can be. And then he showed me the new one. It was spotless, clean, pure white. Well, I've been talking on here for almost an hour. I have.
Food Farms Permaculture just did a dot. <laughs> Now that's a smart man because he, um, I'm going to do what he does that I used to do years ago, but he just reminded me and that will be, I'm going to fish and also garden. That's what I'm going to do. I just finished ordering some little tiny little, uh, one thirty second ounce, uh, jig heads. So I like to go after crappy crappie and I also like to fish fresh water and salt water. And I already have my license for it this year. In the dead of winter, I have my license. No, it's just true. It's just true. Uh, it, it's, I've seen you hooking up those fish when you catch them. And that is how you're supposed to eat. Fresh fish, vegetables, or fruit. And, and, and you know, and you can't do better than that. I used to take catfish because I really didn't like them when they wild. And I would soak them in and, uh, milk overnight with uh, seasoning, maybe some pepper or whatever. And I would soak them. And they would, you know, I, I, I cooked them for family members and people said to me, oh my God, I'm a country woman. I have been around forever and I have eaten fish, catfish for all my life. And I've never tasted anything as good. And that's what she said. Because I soaked it in milk. Vitamin D milk. I'm just I'm just looking at my cat. He just stares at me. He just stares. And he's already eaten. Hunt gathering and grower. I might do some tomatoes this year because I do them every year, but we'll see. My main focus as far as vegetables is going to be okra. Um, okra is easy to grow. And I'm growing beans, but they're bush beans. I never grew them before, so that's going to be interesting. And I have a lot of compost this year, lots of it. Lots of compost. Oh, wow, thank you very much. Well, I have food to put away, and I have to get all cleaned up for tomorrow. Got to go to work early. But it's been really nice talking to all of you. This is the Morning Gardener, talking about planning your garden. Peace and love to you too, uh, Food Fathers Permaculture. And everyone out there, remember to keep on growing. Keep on growing. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. People are saying good night. And that's a beautiful thing. 